You know, it's interesting as we look at this, um, one of the things I like to say to people is, do you understand that giving is a part of God's concern for us? That when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, we have recognized that we are sinners, saved by through faith in the grace of Jesus Christ, and that we have to be changed and we have to be transformed. Now, in our society today, we have a number of people who all they do is say that they have the free choice to do whatever they want. And the difficulty comes in, in the idea of when we become Christian, we give up our free choice to that of God. And we pray that His Holy Spirit would come into our hearts and teach us things, which is really important. Before I put the question up, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says, Now concerning the ministering to the saints. So this is Paul talking to the church at Corinth, the second letter, to the ministry of the saints. I think that's very, very important. And, and as we talk about that, I need you to understand that he is speaking to them as a church. He says, It is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know the willingness that which about which you boast of your of the Macedonian to the Macedonians and the Acacia, and uh, you were ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Now, what, what's he talking about? He's talking about when they gave, when they gave of themselves uh, money. Yet I have sent to the brethren, lest boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not only mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Paul is saying, he's, he's just naturally intercepting here, and he's saying something to the church. He says, I want to thank you for paying attention to the rest of the church, but I need to come to you and remind you. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go ahead of time and prepare your generous gift. What gift? Paul's talking about the gift of giving. Prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you already previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. That's a lot of people who see that today. But this I say, he who sows sparingly, New Testament, he who gives sparingly will also reap sparingly. Paul makes a connection with giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. And he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So he who gives much will receive much. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. In other words, we don't give for the reasons that we have. We give for the reasons that God gave to us. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now, what do you think Paul's talking about here? He's talking about giving, resources. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. God desires that we have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he who disperses abroad, he has given to the poor. He is, his righteousness endures forever. Now, May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which you are enriched in everything for all liberality. Paul says that you can be blessed in how you operate and what you do as you give. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also abounding through many thanksgiving to God. While through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession. I, I want to read that again. While through the proof of this ministry, what ministry? The ministry of giving. They glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ. We give because God gave to us. 
and for your liberal sharing with them, and all men. And by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Okay, that's just one chapter. Now I can go to several places. That's in the New Testament of the Bible. All right. Let's ask the question. Bring the question up. What does the Bible say about Christian tithing? Bernice? Okay, well, the Bible says a couple of things. First of all, the Bible says that uh, as a, somebody who's a Jew with the law, you were obligated to give 10% of your increase as a tithe, regular giving. It's just part of what it is, 10%, goes to the place where God's word is. It was the tabernacle. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. Goes to the place where God's word is, where God's word is taught. So you don't give to a place where God's word is not taught. That's why it's important for us to come to churches that teach the Bible. And I'm committed to this, I'll tell you right now. So that's what we call tithing. And then Paul talks about tithing in many different ways. This is primarily offerings that I just read. But there's giving, that's the standard giving. And the best way I can explain it is Claude Bowers, he's the president of Channel uh, 51 or 52, I can't remember, in Orlando, Florida. We're on that station at 5 o'clock every day. But he said it this way. He said, it's, it's the law of God. It's an eternal law. And it's in place in such a way that it doesn't involve your salvation but it does involve your blessing. So in other words, if you give tithing and you give offerings, however you want to give, it's just going to work. It, the blessing is going to take place. It's just going to happen because that's how God set it up. If you don't give, well, it's not going to take place. It's not going to happen. I know this personally because I've done both. And uh, I can tell you that uh, I recommend highly giving tithe and then some. And then offerings. And God pays attention to the details. Not because he has to, but because he's God. He knows the details. He knows the details. He pays attention to the details. So having said that, the Bible tells us that tithing is important. The Bible tells us it's critical to tithe. It's, and it's, it's, that's what the Bible says, and I believe the Bible. So it's not an obligation for getting saved, but it is a command of God. So we need to pay attention to what the Bible says. Now, I could go off on many ways, but I'm just trying to answer your question, Bernice. What does the Bible say? That's what the Bible says about it. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, that was, that was awesome, Pastor Rod. Thank you. Um, I definitely agree with you 100%. Um, one, one thing that I was reminded of as I was talking to uh, the couple I was um, giving the premarital counseling for, I was reminded of when I was uh, going for my certificate for uh, actually my license to preach um, with the assemblies. And it was back in 2003 and I'm sitting across from a pastor and, and he asks me, is, uh, is tithing talked about in the new Testament? And I said, um, I don't think so. And he said, it is. And I said, Oh really? Where's it found? And he said, uh, I don't know, but it is. So, uh, <laughs> so that was really interesting. So that made me, look for it, track it down. And in Luke chapter 11 and verse 42, it says, Woe to you Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all other kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. And again, that's Luke 11, 42, and Jesus is saying this. And basically, the Pharisees were really good at the the tradition, really good at the routine, really good at the practical things that they needed to do. It was like works-based. And so, but they forgot about love. They forgot about the compassion they're supposed to have for the other people, right? The justice and the love of God. They weren't uh, showing that. So, so we need to be uh, filled with love as we give. And the way, the way we see it now, God owns everything. He's given us the mind to work so we can receive these resources from wherever we're employed, right? So our talents and our gifts, God owns everything. He owns 100%. 
He requires, we see in, in Malachi 3, he requires the 10%, right? Um, and even here, we see it again in, in Luke 11. He requires the 10% from us. That, that belongs to him. So we bring it to the storehouse, as Pastor Rod was saying. And again, it's very important to get into a, a, a good Bible teaching church so that um, we, we feel good about bringing our tithe. We should feel good about where we bring our tithe, right? Because we need to know it's going to good things, uh, you know, to, to build the storehouse so that the people could be fed, right? Spiritually fed. So um, so that's, so that's God owns all of it. 100% belongs to him. He requires 10%, but he also desires that we are good managers of the 90%. So we need to be very generous and we need to be a blessing. If there's a an elderly person next door to you that's struggling finance, financially and you, you have it in your means to buy them groceries or to take care of them in some way, do it by all means. If the church has a, a special project, we as a, as a church, we, we, um, we help support missionaries, about 100 different ministries, whether it's here or abroad. And so I give toward that as well on top of the tithe, on top of the 10%. So um, at, even as Pastor Rod, Rod was reading, I was reminded of, of uh, just these different instances where people just got together and brought all their stuff. You know, the early church, they brought all of their uh, finances together. And the, when, when Moses was collecting for the, the tabernacle, right, everybody just brought, and, and he had to tell them to stop bringing things, right? But uh, I, I want to encourage the people of God to be generous because we're never more like God than when we give, <laughs> you know, when we give of ourselves and we are sacrificial in our, whether it's giving resources or giving of our time and, and encouragement, but especially when we give towards something special that's going to bless his kingdom, um, I would encourage you, if you're on the on the fence about tithing, uh, definitely walk in obedience and watch what God will do. In Malachi, it says, test me and see. Will, will I not open the floodgates of heaven? And, and I, don't, I don't think God's going to make me a millionaire because I tithe. If he does, I want to be a good steward with that million dollars. I wouldn't keep it, you know, I, I would give whatever I could. But uh, so if God's hearing, maybe, you know, maybe he'll bless me. But, anyway. <laughs> but the point is that we need to be good stewards with what God has given us. And it's not, a, uh, it's not like the, the best investment financially ever where you give and all of a sudden God's going to let the money start pouring in. You need to have that mentality that whatever comes in, why is it coming into my lap? Is there a reason God wants this to, uh, is, is there something God has uh, this money to do other than, make me feel better about myself or, or go toward my, my personal desires? Is there something I can do to bless the kingdom? So that's kind of how I feel about it. But tithing is very important. And if you don't tithe already, give God a shot. He says, test me and see. Will I not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessing you cannot even contain? So that's what I say about that. Yeah, that, I agree totally, totally with you. And, and let me read something else here. Matthew 6. This is you know, when God tells us something, when Jesus tells us something, he, he says, stop doing this and start doing that. Or he'll manage us and say, you're doing this for this reason, but do this for that reason, not for this reason. And God, Jesus Christ speaks in Matthew 6 to this. He says, very interesting. He says, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. He's saying, don't do your giving before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. No reward. What? God rewards those who give. It says it in the scripture. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But... When you do a charitable deed, when you do it, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Just do it. Like breathing, do it. Take your charitable deed, uh, that your charitable deed, rather, may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. By the way, that's four verses before the Lord's Prayer, which is described in the next section of scripture. 
and there are places like that all over in the New Testament. So, you know, a charitable deed is giving to an organization, but you don't do it like the Pharisee did it. You do it, you know, when people give to an organization. Uh, I encourage them to give, and don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Just give and just be quiet about it. And I've always struggled with this because when somebody gives large money to our organization, I'm, I'm careful to be in private when I call the person. Sometimes I'll call the person and say, thank you for your gift, just to see where they're at. And so far, every person I've called has been right on track spiritually. So I agree totally with you, Kevin. It's very good. Matt, go ahead. What do you have? Yeah, well, I, I knew following you guys up, what, you know, you you cover it pretty well. So I, I just thought, you know what, I'll just share a strategy, um, strategy I've had for a long time. I call it, it's the no-brainer strategy, which means when, when it comes to tithing, <laughs> this is one of the only times you want to do this. Disconnect your brain. Take the shifter that, can, that engages your brain, disconnect it. Don't think about it. If you think about it, you'll think of excuses. Just send out your tithe first. Write that check first. Don't think about all the other things that you need to use your money for. Just, it's a no-brainer. Send that out first. And it, it's almost like a release. It's a relief. And then, you know, there's an old saying, and it's funny, but it's so true. You know, it's talking about our treasures that are in heaven because they're, they're eternal. There are no U-Hauls being towed behind hearses. So, uh, obviously, our treasures are in heaven. And again, you know, it's a no-brainer. It goes along with the don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. You, you just do it. Let it become natural. It's the first thing you do when you are blessed with your paycheck. Just get it out of your hands get it into God's hands. I think it's important to remember giving, you're absolutely right, Matt. Giving is not giving to any organization. Giving to God is where you're blessed. So you have to give to an organization that loves the Lord. And I would, you know, I would tend to challenge people who think that giving to God means that your name will be read at a telethon. Um, Man, I don't know. Matthew 6 is pretty clear. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. You can read the gift without reading the name. Don't read the name, read the gift. So, you know, there's just some things that you got to work through on that. So, there you go. And somebody once said to me, well, do I tithe on what I take in or do I tithe on my gross? And I, I've always spent my life tithing on my gross and uh, that's all I'm going to say, because even though the government takes, I don't want them to take, but when they take money out, what can I do? But I tithe on my gross. That's what I tithe on, my gross pay, not my net pay. So there you go. All right, very good. So uh, thank you for joining us and being part of us. Father, help us today when we talk about tithing. Teach us your way and show us your path. In Jesus' name, and we said together, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Rod. See you Friday. All right. See you later, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me, as always. Always great to hang with you guys. God bless. All right, good. We'll talk to you guys later. May God bless you and keep you and keep his face to shine upon you as he writes his name on your life this week and gives you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.